Hello, Fremont family. I get to talk to you today about Acts 25. I want to warn you, this devotional's got a heaping helping of my view of things. If you, want, if you agree or disagree with anything, this devotional, uh, anything I say, uh, give me a call. I'd love to chat with you about it. My name is Dave Whitty, and I'm one of the elders here at Fremont. But the views expressed in this devotional are my own. They do not express the views or opinions of Fremont Presbyterian Church, its staff, or any other elders or leaders. All you lawyers out there, we know who you are. That was for you. In this chapter of Acts, we see Paul continue to show his faith through his actions. Paul has been in prison for many years at this point, yet he continues to show, uh, he continues to trust God and do what God tells him to do. We see that we see the Jewish leaders scheming to kill Paul using the Romans in verse three. They requested to have Paul transferred to Jerusalem, for they were preparing an ambush to kill him along the way. When Paul is brought before these same Roman leaders, we see that he uses their worldly structures and systems to advance his heavenly goals, and that we see that we see clearly stated back in Acts 23:11. Take courage, as you have testified me about me in Jerusalem, so you must also testify in Rome. As I read through Acts, and this chapter in particular, I do not see Paul pitting people against each other. He stays centered on Christ and spreads the good news. He does not try to get the Romans to persecute the Jewish leaders. He just preaches the truth to both, preaches the truth to both groups and lets God do the rest. I think there's a very powerful lesson for us in these ancient words of wisdom. Today, in this world, over 2,000 years after Paul was in prison, our world is very divided. There are many around us who want us to hate each other. They want us to hate each other based on our, on our race, on our income, based on our political beliefs, based on our religious beliefs, based on whether we've been vaccinated. They want us to think the people on the other side of these issues are bad people, that we are right and they are wrong. I think if Paul was here with us in these current times, he would tell us to love each other, no matter what color we are, no matter how we voted, no matter what, no matter what, love one another. Paul would tell us that Christ is above all that. He would not pick a side. Jesus is not a tool we just get to use to make our point and bludgeon the other side with. Our family was watching a great YouTube video a few days ago. The YouTuber's name is Destin and his channel is Smarter Every Day. You should go out and spend some hours with Destin. He's awesome and you'll be smarter afterwards. This particular video was titled, The Future of War and How It Affects You. While he was talking to a four-star general about the importance of the human element in warfare, Destin realizes that the enemies of the United States are engaging all of us in a battle right now. He says it like this. I think the biggest threat right now is division. They are going to find the division in our society and they are going to try to amplify it. I would like to submit a, counter a countermeasure, a way to get through this modern bombardment. If they are trying to divide us, I think the way to get around this is pro proactive, intentional unity. We can all do this. We all need to be more conscious of what types of, of content we are consuming, what we are liking, what we are sharing. How is that affecting our minds? Is it affecting the way we treat people? If we extend patience and political grace, not just to people we like, but also to people with whom we disagree, these maneuvers meant to divide us simply will not work. Political grace, basically the art of disagreeing well, is the ultimate countermeasure to this kind of attack. Destin was talking about ta attacks on the United States, and I think he said that very well. There's some words of wisdom there that we can all use. However, Paul says in Philippians 3.20, but our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I would submit that the enemies of our savior, just like the enemies of our country, would like nothing more than for us to be divided. I agree with Destin that grace is the best way to counterattack those enemies. As followers of Jesus, we are called to be filled with love and to give
give those around us the same grace we received from our Savior. I want to personally ask you to join me in this fight. What, co what content are you consuming? What content are you sharing? Are you evaluating the world through the lens of Jesus Christ? If we stay united with the gospel at the center of our lives, then our enemy has no hope of dividing us. Thanks for spending some time with me today, and have a good day, Fremont.